thank you for coming today, just so we can talk a little bit more about writing and even some of this idea of writing as a process, particularly on what approach we should be taking and what about post-process post writing? What does that look like? How do we kind of take a few different approaches of writing? We always think, why do we write? Why do we do these things? And, and I, kind of, I think it's good to ask that question. Just why do we write? So here's a quote I found from uh, Strong's book on it, and it's to write for insight is to make sense of oneself. First and foremost, at the same time, writing is also a means of communicating with others in a classroom. Narrative writing helps students discover meanings in their own experience and connect those meanings to content, curriculum content through reflection. But shaping one's story for another requires a leap of the imagination. Keeping readers in mind, asking what they will need from the text, and even finding the right words. That is the main reason that we write. We primarily write to learn. We learn from writing. At the same time, this is going to get lost on some of our students and even on us as educators. This will just get uncoupled somehow. It's time for us to learn to think critically about any topic. It always has been and it comes down to even writing. We write because we're oratory people. That's in our nature. You can't uncouple writing from speaking no more than you can uncouple speaking from writing. This is why we write, is to understand, to communicate our thoughts and our ideas, and even to improve upon them. So when we think critically about the way that we process through writing versus a process, maybe even a product, what do we approach it from? Given that, I think it's a great time. I gave many of you pieces of paper. I'd love to do just a quick discussion activity. Take that piece of paper, jot down a few of the ideas that you would say are the primary steps of writing, and maybe even the steps that you take yourself while writing. And then we'll share and discuss a few of those. Take one or two minutes just to jot down how you write. Not how you think you think about writing, but when you particularly approach, approach writing, how do you view that process? Just do that for a minute or so, and we'll come back and share and kind of talk through some of those as we move into the approach. In this time, I would take a minute to share, a minute to discuss. That'd be about two minutes, and we'd move on to the aspect of the content. So in that, many of you gave us some good examples. Writing process versus writing for product. These are a lot of the things we talked about. These first ones over here on the right. Standard five paragraph essays. This is the modern nomenclature, the introductions to how we write uh, our first format papers, introduction, three body paragraphs, closing statement. Somewhere in there is a thesis idea. Maybe for some of you it's outlines or these processes of we need to formulate the lesson. Maybe you reverse engineer it. Maybe it's from formal academic papers, the styles we write. Those again, MLA, APA, these ways of formatting our papers, and we just kind of fill in the space with the content that's necessary for them. We know what it looks like. Maybe it's on the other side of the spectrum for journal narrative free writing, where we're just kind of letting loose with our creative ideas. We're writing knowing that not all of it will pan out, but we're just writing. We're getting ideas out on paper, and we'll let the outlines be formed out of that later. We're writing for the sake of writing. There's also the other aspect of it, that we write for product, and we miss out on that a lot. We text, we're writing. When we're sending important emails to our friends or to our coworkers, there is a procedure and an end game product that we are hoping for. Even our social media updates. We're writing with an intent to clarify and share an idea, to share a piece of us in that writing. So we need to think about it. Remember, if our students are to be successful in school, at work, or in their personal lives, they must learn to write. We don't think about this. That affects the academic side just as much as the other side. We may have smart writers, what individual students who write well, they don't know how to send a formal academic, a formal email to a work colleague, and they won't until someone comes and does it or shows them what it looks like. This requires that we that they receive adequate practice and instruction in writing. It's a complex skill. I mean, there's processes to it that we don't think about. A basic goal of schooling would be to teach students how to use the versatile tool of writing effectively and flexibly. So really, this kind of culminates in the idea of what's our question to consider? What if instead of looking at these writing opportunities just as products that we're producing, we see the need to look at maybe the process of writing and 
It's just that. There's a process to it. There's procedures to it. So when we increase our critical analysis, our writing assignments can, be, can make students more diligent in their exercises and mastering the material. In addition, these writing assignments, or maybe even thinking the process of how we assign writing, are aimed to develop students' ability to think critically about how they are culminating in that writing process. So what does it mean? We're talking about process and, and product writing. What does that mean? What's this nomenclature? Let's start with the one that we're probably somewhat familiar with, but less in some regard. We know about pre-writing, during writing, and post-process writing. Those are the three variants of the phases. And they can be used in process writing interchangeably uh, within the task of these writing processes. So to define them, because it's good to define terms, right, for us to understand, pre-writing builds tasks, or tasks builds and reviews these little sub-skills, the, the structures that we have, for the final writing activity. During writing, uh, those are the tasks during the primary writing process, which encourage self-editing or peer review, is where we come up and we say, I've made some mistakes, can we look through these and, and work through them to get our, to our final product. And the process of writing actually would be that it allows for reflection, sharing, publishing of the final product. Right? These are the kind of things we get. Now we're using product, but there is a procedural aspect to it. There's a process for it. And these things can be used interchangeably. Whereas when we look at product approach, product approach emphasizes exercises in which the students mimic, copy, and alter teacher-provided student writing examples. The process approach emphasizes the work produced and required to produce a piece of paper. Writing for a product should focus on creating clear sentences and product paragraphs free from error. Do you see how these things kind of juxtapose each other? They sound very similar in the process, but one is mimicry. The other is a critical analysis of writing, right? Uh, when we do the process approach, it's really this ability to envision cohesively related activity sets, which fully encompass the pre-writing, the writing, and the post-writing chores. It, it's crucial for designing practical writing tasks. Our students are more likely to finish the writing assignment and benefit from the writing process when they use these connected activity sets. Creating such activity sets is simplified by starting with the end goal in mind. Suppose you place writing within the larger context of an activity set, right? Maybe within the history or, or within the, the, the particular book that, that you're working through in your literary aspect. In that case, you can almost guarantee that writing is taught as a process with brainstorming, editing, rewriting, several different writing tasks and actively going through and editing them looking back, saying, here's my product, I wanna look back reflectively. We're constantly working back. We're in the post process, we move to the during, we go back to pre and say, did I have these ideas right? And we keep moving back synonymously, kind of like this. They feed into each other and they move interchangeably in and out together. All to culminate in this wonderful imagery of the benefits of potential writing. It moves away from the teacher necessity. We need to be here as educators we need to be here to engage our students, but at some point they're going to need to know how to write critically and write well. And if they can't engage in independent writing, which would, this would idea would potentially encourage them in, it's not going to help them to think critically about the end goal of their product, which is all that we really want them to do. We want them to think critically about the end goal. We want them to move away from mimicry and more about thinking, how do I see this end goal in mind? and write towards it. And this really opens up the options of how our writing matters, even outside of the academic setting. It is incredibly important and an important necessity for people to know how to write well outside of the formal education format, just as much as it is for the regular work environment. They have to be linked, and if we can look at this as a process to encourage students, we'll be able to do that. So thank you for taking the time just to share about writing as a process. I hope it's encouraging. I hope that you find yourself thinking a little more critically about how we can engage our students. And I have plenty of the references and some of the content that I'd love to share with you. We can talk after. Thanks.